and we're going to use the October CMS, which was built on Laravel. All right, so we're going to set up a website. We're going to navigate the back end, create, uh, create some pages, create some blog posts. We're also going to create a custom theme, and then we're also going to create a custom component, okay, which is a type of plugin for October CMS. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the website. I'm going to go to uh, download the installer. Okay, and it's just going to download this zip file called installmaster.zip. So let's go ahead and open that up. And you'll have this folder called install master. So you're going to want to upload these files to your web host. Okay, we're using Xamp. So what I'll do is just um, let's see, we'll open up Xamp or go into the htdocs and let's create a new folder here and we're going to call this uh, let's just call this Acme and we'll bring all these files over all right and then we want to run this install.php file through the browser but first thing we want to do before that is create a database all right so let's create a database so we'll just call it Acme Call it Acme underscore oct and click create. All right, so now we have the database created. So now let's navigate to localhost slash Acme. And actually, we want to go to the install.php file. And it's just going to run a couple checks on your system to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, if you're using XAMP, everything should be checked off and we should be good to go. So let's click agree. And then we need to put in the parameters for the database. So the database name is Acme underscore oct. And then for the login, you want to put your database uh, username. I'm using the root, uh, the root login and then the password. And then we want to click this administrator button. And this is where what you want to put for the admin data for your back end. So let's say first name, last name. And then email, I'm just going to use brad at gmail.com. And then for the admin login, you can change it if you want, but I'm just going to use admin and put in my password. All right, so now let's click on advanced. And you can provide a different backend URL if you want. Uh, the default is slash backend. And then there's this encryption code, you want to leave that. And then we're going to leave the permissions at 777. Okay, so we should be all set. Let's click continue. And it's going to ask us how we want to set up our site. So there's basically three options. We have start from scratch, which will install October without any plugins or themes. We have start from a theme, which uh, we'll pick, we can pick from a pre-built site that fits a general purpose. Or we could use a specific project ID. What I'm going to do here is start from a theme just so we have something to work with and something to look at. All right, so let's go ahead and click that. And there's all different themes you can choose from. I'm just going to grab the first one here, this clean blog, and we're going to click install. OK, and then we'll click confirm. And that's going to go ahead and set that stuff up for us. And you can attach uh, custom plugins and components and stuff to a theme as well. And we'll get into that later on. If you want to set up a virtual host, you can, uh, but I'm just going to use localhost slash Acme. OK, we can use that as our URL. All right, so that's all set. Now it, sh it shows us the web address, which is localhost slash Acme. So let's go ahead and open that in a new tab. And you should see something like this. OK, so it looks pretty nice. This is that theme that we chose. Uh, and then if we want to look, look, go to the back end, we can click on this link here, which just goes to slash back end. And we can go ahead and log in with the, the account that we chose. All right. And it's a pretty nice back end. So we're going to stop here. And in the next video, we'll take a little tour of the back end before we get into some programming. So this is the back end. This is the dashboard area. It's kind of the welcome page. And you'll see it gives you some some uh, status for your system, it gives you a little preview of the front end. And if your theme permits it, you have some options here as well as far as the columns. Um, now, if we go to CMS, this is where we can create pages for the website for the front end. 
and notice that each page is associated with a URL. It's associated with a route. All right. And then we can also have folders in here, such as this blog folder with more pages. All right. So what I'm going to do is open up uh, the installation folder in Atom. Okay, so let's go add project folder. And we want Acme. And then these are the files. Okay, and they, it, the structure is somewhat familiar uh, because it's built on Laravel. If we look in the config, for instance, the app.php file, it has the provider down here and all that stuff, aliases, just like uh, any standard Laravel website. Same thing with most of these config options. There's also a storage folder. That's where all the assets get uploaded to. Um, and then in themes is where the October themes go. And we're going to create a custom theme. But before we do that, let's go and go to the back end here. And let's go ahead and create a new page. So I'm going to just click on add. And let's see, we'll call this. This is the file name. And if you look over here, uh, let's see, where is it? We want to go into. This is the current theme responsive clean, and this is actually where the pages get put. You can see in here there's a home page. Uh, there's a the blog folder that we can see from the back end. So when we create a page, it's going to go into there. So let's say contact. And then for the layout, we're going to choose the default layout. Okay, your themes can have multiple layouts. If you look over here, you'll see that default layout. And then for the description, we'll just say contact us and then you can put all your markup in here. So what I'll do is just put an H1 and you can actually use the tab. So if I just do H1 and then tab, it'll actually turn into a tag. All right. So this is a, a, a pretty handy little editor. So we'll say contact us and let's just put uh, you know what? I'm just going to paste in a form here. All right. So this is just your standard bootstrap form. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this. Oh, actually, we got to put the page title up here. We'll say contact. It'll automatically create the URL slash contact, but you can edit this if you want. Uh, but I'm just going to keep that. You can also put your meta description in here, meta title. Uh, we'll just leave that blank, though, and then let's click save. All right, so it says template saved. And if we look up here, now we have a contact page. So if we go to our front end, let's go to slash contact and there's our page. And if we wanted to add this to a menu, we could go over to our theme. And let's see, we want to go to partials site and then there's a header dot HTML file or HTM. And this is where uh, the, the let's see. Actually, you know what? This isn't where I want to go. I want the sidebar, which is this file right here. And then you'll see that there's the sidebar segments. So we have the recent posts and then follow me. Recent posts is actually a component. You can see it's looping through the posts here. It's the blog post dot post com uh, component. But what I'll do is copy this. And let's paste that in here. And we'll just call this main menu. And then we'll get rid of that loop and let's put an LI tag here and then an A tag. Now for the links, you'll see the format right here. You need to put the the name of the page and then identify it as a page. So this is a link to the home. So I'm just going to put that in there and we'll say home. Okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and paste this in and let's say contact. And then we'll change this to contact. All right, we'll save that. Reload and now we have a menu home page contact. Now we don't have to do it in in our editor. We can actually go to uh, partials and you'll see site and then sidebar. OK, so this is what we just did. We just created so you can use either the CMS, uh, which is probably a better idea, uh, but you can also just update the, the theme files. 
All right, I'm not going to get into the entire structure of the theme yet. We're going to do that next, but I just wanted to show you um, kind of how that works. Now, there's also something called components. All right, so if we click on components, you'll see there's two in here. There's this to do list um, and then there's a blog component. Okay, so this to do list is actually associated with the demo template that comes by default. All right, you can associate components with themes. The blog right here is more of a standalone component and you can choose things like the category listing, um, the post listing, an, in, an individual post and an RSS feed. So you'll see on the sidebar, it's actually using this post list. That's where this is coming from. Okay, so this is a this is a component. What we're going to do is we're going to later on create our own component, which will be uh, a list of, of links. Okay, something very, very simple. Now we also have, let's see, we looked at partials so you can edit your header, you can edit your um, your meta tags, all that stuff. And let's see, we have layouts. So we only have one layout, which is the default HTM, uh, but you can create multiple layouts if you want. If we go to content, there's no content files, but we could uh, basically create text files here and you can save them as as multiple types with with different extensions. Uh, assets will just show us like our CSS files and all that. We can edit all that stuff from here. So for a front end user, there's there's really no reason to go into the files, into the theme files. This is a really nice CMS that you could use similar to WordPress or Joomla something like that it's just much more lightweight all right um, you'll see there's a, there's a tabbed interface as well and we'll just close this stuff up all right and then for media we can manage images videos audio clips whatever we want we can upload that stuff uh, blog okay so this is where we can create blog posts if we go to our front end you'll see we have this first blog post if I click on that it'll take us to the individual page for that post all right, and if we want to create a new post, we can do that. Let's just say blog post two, and it has a slug and you can rename this if you want. And then let's just say this. This is my blog post and it actually shows you what it'll look like over here. Uh, I believe we can put tags in here. Let's see if we wanted to do like an H3. Yeah, you'll see it'll actually show you what it what it will look like over here. So that's pretty cool. Let's just change that to a paragraph. All right. And then you can choose categories. Uh, we only have one which is uncategorized. And then for manage, this is where you can check it. You can make it published. You can choose a certain date for it to be published. You can put in an excerpt. Say this is my post. You could also upload an image, a featured image. So let's go ahead and click save. And then on the front end, if we reload, you'll see we have blog post two and that shows over here as well. If we click on that. It'll take us to that individual page. All right, so let's see what else we have. We have settings. OK, if we go to settings, we can choose the theme. So you'll see there's a demo by default, but it also has the clean theme, which is what we're, we're seeing now in the front end. And what's really nice is you can actually say create a new blank theme. And then from there, go ahead and add all your files and you can do it from the front end here. Well, I shouldn't say front end. It's the front end of the back end or you can do it from, you know, from your code. All right. You can also set uh, maintenance mode, which will, I believe, just disable the front end. And then you have uh, you can manage updates and plugins, administrators. You can add other users and set them to certain groups and certain privileges, uh, mail functions event logs, access logs. There's a lot of stuff. This is a really nice little system and it's all built on top of Laravel. You know, the reason why I, I, I put this in this course is so that you could see uh, a production based um, application that's built in Laravel, because although we're doing, you know, 10 different projects here, we're not we can't do anything like this. We can't do a production type uh, or a production level application in a 10 project course. It would just, you know, it would take a year to develop. All right. So um, with that said, I also did want to do some coding, not just front end stuff here. So in the next video, we're going to start to create our custom theme.